the Lingang Mega Excavator Factory. Robots and machines reign supreme here. Their value, 375 million euros. State-of-the-art technology put to work by highly trained specialists produce astonishing output. A new high-tech excavator rolls off the line here every 10 minutes. This is Mega. excavator factories in the world. Built from scratch here in the greater Shanghai industry zone at a cost of a half a billion euros. Sunny, the Chinese market leader, manufactures new high-tech excavators here. Up to 40,000 each year at full production. The goal, to dominate the global market. To help them achieve this, the best seller in the mid-range segment, the model SY215. Its price, 110,000 euros. Reach, 9.57 meters. Digging force, 138 kilonewtons. The Linggang site, almost a million square meters in size. The manufacturing operation split between three buildings. And it all starts here at the back of building one. Monday morning, 10 o'clock. A semi-trailer loaded with 75 tons of steel. Value of the delivery, 32,000 euros. Chief Engineer Xu Bin inspects the goods. His team will use the steel to construct high-quality excavators capable of operating for over 20,000 hours under the most extreme conditions. Chief Engineer Xu is satisfied. Production of the new vehicles can begin. This simple steel plating is where it all starts. A perfectly coordinated production chain begins. Washing, cutting to length, forming, shaping, welding, coating, and finally assembly. This basic raw material is transformed into a state-of-the-art machine. It makes me proud. 250 cutting-edge robots and machines will soon turn the steel plating into high-tech excavators. They work with extreme accuracy, down to the micrometer. In order to ensure this level of precision, the rust must first be removed. Just 15 seconds later, everything smooth and processing can begin. The birth of the new excavator. The steel plating is transferred to a precision plasma cutting machine. In just one operation, nearly a hundred individual parts emerge blinking into the world, all produced from a single plate. Supervisor Liu Minyong must rigidly adhere to the specified cutting pattern. But there's a problem. The steel plate isn't lying perfectly straight. Supervisor Liu must now realign the plate exactly or the machine will cut beyond the edge. The consequence, delays in the production chain and a loss of several thousand euros. The plate of steel was slightly askew. The machine now has to compensate for this. If the steel plate is cut at an angle, the shapes won't be right. We have to reconfigure the machine. There at the front and back so that the plate is no longer a skew for the robot. At last, the plasma cutter starts up. No more corrections can be made now. 
or all parts will be imperfect and unusable. An arc cuts through the 80 millimeter thick plate of steel using electrically conductive gas. The temperature at the cutting site, 30,000 degrees Celsius. The big advantage of the plasma method, the cutting speed is four times faster than with a conventional cutting torch, which leads to increased overall productivity and accuracy. 20 square meters of raw steel produce 180 individual parts for the excavator. The operation takes just seven minutes. Supervisor Li Yu is on target. The material waste, not even 3%. He cuts over 7,000 individual parts in a single shift. They'll be collected for further processing at the allotted time. In order to meet the strict targets set by the company management, the task to produce a new excavator every 10 minutes. The cut parts continue on their journey over a public road to building number two. That's where the state-of-the-art welding plant is located. Robots have taken over almost complete control here. Humans are only responsible for starting the processes. Then they hand over to the pre-programmed experts. Humans begin to clamp the various cut parts of the undercarriage and fixings. This is just the preparatory work. The actual welding operation is performed by the robots. Human precision here is of paramount importance. The machines on the welding line may be fast and accurate, but if the parts are clamped incorrectly, they can't do anything about it. This is the central element of the future excavator, the slew ring. This is where the rotating superstructure and the undercarriage connect. On the inside, a ring gear with 120 teeth and a sprocket with 12 teeth that drives the assembly. The excavators can turn on their own axis. The slew ring is subjected to enormous forces. The connection must remain stable even under a load of four tons. The workers have just 10 minutes to join the components with millimeter precision. The parts are temporarily fixed with 10 centimeter tack welds. Then the robots take over. From now on, human involvement is restricted to control purposes only. The cutting-edge welding plant cost 40 million euros. The investment has long since paid for itself. The robot's work is not only more precise than a mere mortal's, they're also twice as fast. The first step the slew ring is placed on the middle section of the undercarriage. The flame at the welding point, 1,700 degrees Celsius. Thirty-two robots have replaced 24 human workers in this production step. The workmanship is now faultless and utterly precise. Automation has increased the longevity of the excavators enormously, an important criterion for the Chinese to prevail in the competitive international market.
transport from one station to the next. Industrial accidents were commonplace here in the past, when the roughly three-ton parts were still being moved by workers using cranes and chains. This danger has now been completely eliminated, saving human lives. The undercarriage consists of three elements. The middle section, on which the slew ring now sits, and two lateral sections. This is where the track system will be mounted later on. The excavator is propelled by two sprocket wheels on each side. The track plates dig up to three centimeters deep into the ground. The giant machines have to maintain their grip even on inclines of 70%. The final section of the welding line. The three elements of the undercarriage are joined. Humans, once again, only required for the preparatory work. Across the factory as a whole, increasing automation has led to a one-third reduction in the workforce, while simultaneously increasing output, and with it, the profit too. Every movement the machines make is electronically recorded. If the robot remains motionless for even a second, the company's control department registers the downtime immediately. The control center responsible for the Mega Excavator Factory lies almost 100 kilometers to the northwest of Lingang at Sani's Kunshan facility. This is where the real-time performance data is gathered. The controllers also have access to the cameras monitoring the robot line. The images are fed to a 40 square meter display. Pan Rui Gang and his team analyze the data for the purpose of further increasing profit. The consolidated annual profit last year was around 600 million euros. If more orders are received, Deputy Director Pan ramps up the production speed. If individual machines are offline, he adjusts the production schedule accordingly. They have over 30 welding machines in Lingang, and I have all the data for these machines here. Everything is linked via the RED network. For instance, we can monitor a Panasonic welding machine here. It's been powered up for 2.26 hours today and been in operation for 1.78 hours. Its operational readiness is 96.81% and actual operating quota is 78.87%. Its power consumption is 17.30 kilowatt per hour. As you can see, we have all the key data at our fingertips. A masterpiece of internal data management. Back to the factory in Lingang. The distance by car, a good hour's drive. Exchanging data between the sites takes just a few milliseconds. The welding of the excavator undercarriage is finished. Now it's ready to be painted. Absolute precision is demanded, despite temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius. The tolerances for the paint job lie in the micrometer range. The Lingang Excavator Factory, built from scratch in just 12 months. When operating at full capacity, Sani could theoretically produce 40,000 excavators here each year. Transport from one station to the next, seamlessly designed. The welded parts are conveyed directly to the paint shop via an automatic aerial cableway. 
increasing speed and productivity. It's like renovating a room at home. First, the surfaces are clean. Then, the workers mask off the areas that must not be painted. The paint shop foreman, Wang Zisheng, he works for eight hours a day in a protective suit, usually in sweltering conditions. But despite this, working here is his dream job. I really like working with paint. I like the smell. Coating the parts with paint is a great job. I can take a product with a rough surface and improve it step by step until it's perfect. Priming. If the workers do a sloppy job, the vehicle won't be properly protected against corrosion at the spots that receive too thin a coat, rusting excavators. This would be a disaster for the Chinese company's image. Reliability and performance are paramount. The workers have just eight minutes. Then the section moves down the line to receive its actual finish. The priming has left some minor blemishes. Foreman Wang's people rectify them in just 40 seconds. Now comes the most difficult part. They have just 10 minutes to give the undercarriage a perfect black paint job. Precision work under extreme conditions, in 40 degree heat and with a respirator. The most important thing is that the spraying nozzle is always kept perpendicular to the surface and at a distance of 20 to 30 centimeters. If it gets too close, the layer of paint will be too thick. If it's too far away, the coat will be too thin. The painters must work very accurately to ensure the thickness of the coat is just right. If too thin a coat is applied, the slightest scratch will allow the primer to show through. If it's too thick, the material cost across will creep up and reduce the all-important margin. A few years ago, this operation was automated for a short period, but the management decided to remove the robots again. They worked too imprecisely in this case, and as a consequence, were replaced by humans. The massive parts hang from two chains, swinging back and forth slightly. The robots couldn't compensate for this with sufficient accuracy. I use this gauge to check the work. I press it firmly against the surface and check the scale to see how much paint has adhered at which point. The paint layer here is 125 micrometers thick. According to specification, it should be between 80 and 140. That means that this product is acceptable. The parts are now painted. The excavator will soon be brought to life. At one of the most modern production lines in the world. Working non-stop, time pressure. Final assembly for the high-tech monsters. But how do the freshly painted parts get to the assembly building without getting wet? The Chinese solved this problem by building a tunnel. 120 meters long, 10 meters deep. It connects building two with building three. This is where the final assembly line is located. A new excavator is produced here every 10 minutes. At the end of the tunnel, one of the most modern temporary storage facilities in the world. And it's also the start of the final assembly line. The 10 meter high warehouse ensures a constant supply of components. There's space for 20 parts on each side. A detailed schedule indicates which part is needed when. The fully automated crane then carries the elements from their storage location to the production line.
What makes the Lingang Mega Factory unique? The final assembly line allows the Chinese to not only manufacture a large number of excavators, but different models too, all on the same assembly line, depending on demand. Chief Engineer Xu Bin has a comprehensive overview. This display is updated every few minutes. Everything is recorded every serial number, and the sequence of models. This shows us how many parts are being delivered on this day and how many excavators we actually have to produce. Look here. The number varies from day to day. That shows the number on the third day of the week, this year on the fourth. We can monitor every detail of the manufacturing process and we have the rate of production under control at all times. The four-ton undercarriage must first be turned over. This used to require four assembly workers and took five minutes. And industrial accidents were unfortunately not uncommon. Today, this task is performed by a robot in just 50 seconds. The workers can now install the idlers for the track system. More than 3,000 screws pass through each worker's hands each day in order to manufacture up to 50 new excavators. Final assembly, robots and human specialists working in perfectly coordinated synergy. The mega factory is home to 375 million euros of heavy robotic machinery. The tracks will later run over these rollers. They must be able to maintain their grip on inclines of 70% when on site. An assembly error at this station could put the life of the excavator operator at risk. The time has come for the tracks to be mounted. wrapped around two large idlers and nine small track rollers. Forty-nine interlock track links on each side will later keep the 23-ton machine on course at a speed of up to six kilometers per hour. On production line two, a team is working in parallel on the superstructure. The production schedule must be strictly adhered to here as well, in order to meet the immense daily production figures. Several dozen black and yellow cab housings await installation. The workers first install the interior fittings of the cabs. One hour of manual work for the seat, control equipment, and electronics. This is the all-important operator interface. Directly behind the driver's seat, a component that sets new standards on the global market, a highly intelligent black box. The high-tech device records all key performance data from the superstructure during operation. Engine parameters, fuel consumption, oil pressure of the hydraulic system. If the values deviate too greatly from the set points, an alarm is triggered. This is transmitted in real time to the control center, thousands of kilometers away. to Kunshan in the northwest of Shanghai. 
All of the data from the vehicle is collected in Kunshan from all over the world, around the clock. Pan Rui Gang is proud of this technology. At peak times, up to half a million Sani vehicles are online. His team detects technical problems immediately, usually before the driver operating the excavator does, irrespective of the continent they're on. We have a complete overview here and can take action ourselves. This is a huge advantage. If the parameters for an excavator are unusual, a red alarm is triggered. For example, if there's a problem with the oil tank, our colleagues then get in touch with the customer by telephone or via the Internet and inform them of the situation. As a result, we can provide better customer service than our competitors. A big advantage in the battle for an increased share of the market. But the Chinese want to impress customers with their innovations as well as their service. In Lingang, the development department is continually testing new features. The excavator of the future. What will it look like? This red test model is also an SY215, but it's equipped with the latest generation of special high-tech equipment. The key new feature, the excavator can be remotely controlled. The driver can control around a thousand different movement sequences by joystick, including from a great distance. The big advantage? Excavators like this can be deployed in environments that are very strenuous for people, or even life-threatening. The driver's seat of the special edition model SY215E remains completely empty. Sami provided similar machines to help with the cleanup work in Fukushima. Thanks to remote controlled excavators, no drivers will have to subject themselves to radioactivity or other hazards in future. In extreme situations like this, the Chinese can even control the machines from a very long way away. A cab, an excavator operator, and a virtual reality headset. Not much more is needed to control the 23-tonner. During testing as here, the excavator of the future is located just a few meters away. But in an emergency, the operator can control an excavator elsewhere in the world from his cab in Lingang, and if necessary, on a completely different continent. The only prerequisite? 5G network coverage in the area of deployment. It's then possible to control the vehicle in real time from anywhere on Earth. Back to production line two. The clock is ticking. SY215 must be finished in four hours. The workers install the seat directly in front of the black box. Key components are installed in the superstructure every 10 minutes. The hydraulic pump. It supplies the arms and shovel with an oil pressure of 300 bar. This enables the excavator to lift weights of one and a half tons. 
The cab, air conditioning system, all-round view, fully soundproof. Operator safety is a key consideration for Sony and for the clients. A Japanese Usushu 5-liter engine. Power output, 128 kilowatts. Finally, the superstructure is finished. The trickiest and most dangerous stage of the final assembly lies before. The two production lines are united. Undercarriages and superstructures arrive at 10 minute intervals. Final preparations at production line one. The workers pack the slew ring with grease. This is the junction between the undercarriage and superstructure, where the wheels meet the engine and cab. It's where the excavator rotates through the critical 360 degrees in just five seconds, with as little resistance as possible. The massive superstructure will soon be mounted on the slew ring. A special adhesive provides for initial grip directly after the two sections make contact. But when exposed to the air, it only acts for a short time. Once applied, every second counts for the workers. The time has come. The so-called marriage can begin. A crane system carries the revolving superstructure, which now weighs 12 tons, 20 meters through the air. The difficulty? The superstructure swings back and forth by around 20 centimeters. Shift worker Song Jin Jong is responsible for this critical step. He and his two colleagues must maneuver the swinging cab onto the slew ring. With millimeter precision. And do so as quickly as possible, because the adhesive is steadily losing its effect. We've been specially trained for this job. We've been given precise instructions on what needs to be done. We have to work quickly, but carefully. It can only be done if you have good reactions. Your eyes, brain and hands must act in concert. Experience is extremely important too. The critical moment has arrived. The massive superstructure is still swinging alarmingly. And suddenly, everything goes very quickly. Done. The workers secure the connection held thus far by the adhesive with bolts. The next big moment of the final assembly is fast approaching. Just a few last operations to perform. Oil and fuel are added to the tanks. Then finally, the excavator can move under its own power for the first time. But the entire front section is still missing. A lifting system with massive arms and flexible hydraulic systems and the excavating bucket. Lunchtime, including for shift worker Zong, who just maneuvered the superstructure onto the undercarriage. The company's management strictly controls work and rest periods. 
by means of a facial recognition system. A facial recognition system records when we arrive for work and when we leave. The modern time clock can't be fooled. It stores his photo along with the exact time. They head to the canteen in an orderly fashion. It's not a requirement, but certainly desired. Everyone here feels more comfortable with a certain orderliness. 1,600 people work here in one of the largest and most modern excavator factories in the world. Lunch is served in several shifts. The workers can choose between three different meals. The price, one euro. Rice and soup are free. On average, a worker in Lingang earns 1,500 euros a month. The back section of building two. This is where the critical phase of the excavator arm installation begins. Around 100 excavator arms are stored here. A thousand tons of steel, enough for just two days. The freshly painted arms mustn't come into contact with rain on the way to final assembly. In this case, they aren't protected by a tunnel, but a bridge. That connects building two with building three at a height of eight meters. The workers now start assembling the complex articulated arm. Especially important, these thin hoses with a diameter of just two centimeters. Hydraulic oil will later flow through them under extreme pressure. The hoses must be able to withstand it, but still be elastic and flexible. Chief Engineer Xu Bin checks to ensure they're installed properly. He knows how important these hoses are. Extreme pressure additives flow through here. In order to withstand the immense pressure, the hoses are reinforced with four to five overlapping layers of wire inside. These are surrounded by two plastic layers on the outside. This allows the hoses to stretch to accommodate movements while simultaneously being able to withstand the extreme oil pressure. Correct installation of the hydraulic system, absolutely critical. When in operation, the bucket can be up to 10 meters from the excavator's center of gravity. But even there, it must still be able to lift and slew one and a half tons. At the heart of the hydraulic system is the pump, with a capacity of 200 liters of oil per minute. It generates a working pressure within the hoses of over 300 bar. It supplies all of the hydraulic components. Boom cylinder, arm cylinder, bucket cylinder. This is necessary for the bucket to achieve its maximum digging force of 138 kilonewtons. The final push on the assembly line. Workers fit the prepared arms to the excavators. After not even 23 working hours, this new SY215 is nearing completion.
Dasani has almost doubled its annual profit in the excavator segment. The construction machinery giant sells most of its vehicles in China, but they're now increasingly looking to grow their overseas business. The strategy, a little less expensive than their Europeans and American counterparts in order to attract new customers and a little more expensive than the Koreans, who they want to squeeze out of the market with higher quality and better reliability. The finishing touches. The only thing left now is to attach the bucket to the excavator. It's finished. A new SY215 is on the move. It's worth 110,000 euros. Like all vehicles, the next stop is quality control. Even at its maximum reach of 9.57 meters, the hydraulic system must still operate at full power. The test center is located just a few meters further along, at the end of building three. 20 meters high, roughly 1,000 square meters in size. Extreme stress tests, strict inspectors. The newly assembled excavators now have to demonstrate what they're capable of. The requirement when in use, over a thousand different movement sequences. The most important 200 will now be tested. Test driver Liu Renwei fills the hydraulic system with oil. The stress test begins while it's still running into the excavator. First, test driver Liu runs through the most important basic functions killing two birds with one stone in the process. The oil gets distributed evenly, and he gets his first impressions at the same time. We've only just filled the new machine with hydraulic oil. The most important thing right now I want to filter the hydraulic fluid in every system and oil tank in order to ensure the purity of the oil. The next station. Here, the tracking is put to the test. Are the track systems perfectly installed? And can the 23-ton monster drive in a straight line. Li Yu checks the deviation, driving forwards and backwards. Down there is the reference line. We check whether the deviation is within our tolerance range when the excavator is driven over a distance of 20 meters. Our standard is very strict. The permitted deviation, 20 centimeters. Here, it's just eight. Everything's great. The hydraulic systems test. The bucket is raised to a height of almost 10 meters and back down again, five times in one minute. The flexible hoses withstand the oil pressure. Now, it's the turn of the slew ring. Five rotations in just 25 seconds, in both directions. Have the technicians perfectly married the superstructure and undercarriage? The excavator passes the test. The functional test of a new model takes 30 minutes. 
To be able to adequately test the procession of new excavators requires four test operators to be on duty at the same time. Test driver Liu lives his childhood dream every day, driving an excavator under extreme conditions and getting paid to do it as well. It really is a fascinating job I have. I'm involved with excavators in my spare time too. I'm into extreme challenges in the cab. I've even won a prize on a TV show as an excavator operator. All tests passed. One of six new excavators per hour is ready for sale. Chief Engineer Xu Bin follows the final test too, and does so with a certain pride. In just 24 work hours, a few pieces of steel plating have been transformed into a new high-tech excavator. I've worked in the excavator industry for many years, and I'm very proud of the developments of recent years. It's impressive to see the output and quality of excavators in China continually improving. Another SY215 has been born into the market. Manufactured in one of the largest excavator factories in the world. The capacity of the cutting-edge plant is enormous.